I'm Scott Holbrook, President of SECURE, and today I would like to tell you why we invest in Algorand. To do so, first we're going to look at a couple different things. We'll need to understand what a Layer 1 blockchain is. We'll need to understand the blockchain trilemma that all Layer 1s are trying to overcome. After we get those out of the way, we'll look at the B2B ecosystem in Algorand, do some tokenomics analysis, tie things up with the team and partnerships, and then give our final thoughts. A layer one blockchain is actually what most people typically think of when they think of a blockchain. It's the underlying infrastructure that has the tokens. So you can think of the layer ones as a base layer and they're directly responsible for all the security, the decentralization, uh, the public permissiveness and everything that gets associated with blockchains. Uh, secondly, they're responsible for validation and finalization. That is the transactions aren't considered true until the layer one blockchain actually validates and finalizes them. Uh, we mentioned the decentralization um, and they are also that distributed public ledger. That is all the transactions that have ever taken place on that blockchain are all available from Genesis up until the present time. And so layer ones are actually what the blockchain infrastructure is built on. All the other dApps and programs that you see uh, are built on top of these layer ones. And so Algorand is a layer one blockchain, which means that it is a base layer, which means it will form the foundation for other blockchain projects to build on top of it. Now, all blockchains are actually trying to overcome three things. First of all, they are trying to be secure. Um, that is, they operate as expected, um, defends itself from attacks uh, and other unforeseen issues. Uh, they're expected to be scalable. That is, as the uses grow and as the processing power grows, as more people come on to it, the blockchain is expected to accommodate each of those people, that growing amount of transactions. And then finally, decentralization. What we're looking for in a blockchain is that there's no single point of failure, unlike, let's say, a centralized cloud server, where if that one particular server goes down or that building goes down full of servers, uh, electricity is out to the area, then the entire network is going to be compromised. Uh, with decentralization, you don't have those single points of failure, um, and so it's not. And so for any layer one blockchain, these three uh, issues are what they're all trying to balance. And it's traditionally been assumed that you can get two, but not the third. So you can pick your two, um, but then the third one's going to suffer. Uh, however, Algorand has overcome that uh, that impediment and is actually able to scale all three of these in the uh, from the blockchain trilemma. And we'll see how in a second. The way they do it is through what they call a pure proof of stake. Uh, proof of stake, proof of work, these are outside the scope of this video, uh, but suffice it to say that a proof of stake is the most eco-friendly uh, as well as the fastest of the options. And what makes Algorand's proof of stake a bit different is that it's used in order to actually provide some security. It's also used for the decentralization. It's fast. Um, in other words, it can scale all three of those blockchain trilemma. And the way they do it is, first of all, everyone is a governor. If you have just one algo, even half an algo, uh, you're capable of voting. You can stake those into the governance protocol. Uh, you can vote. And so that's how they get the decentralization is that any algo is able to be a voter. The second thing that they do is they have random validators. Um, every blockchain needs validators. That's how new blocks get produced. Uh, what, what Algorand does that makes it um, secure is that who's going to be the validator is unknown. Um, typically for a blockchain, the validators have these huge setups and you know, everyone knows where they are. Um, but for Algorand, that's not the case. And so since the, the validators are going to be chosen to validate the next block are all done in a random way, um, that's what provides the security. And then finally, we're able to scale because it has a very, very fast finality time. Under four seconds, they're working to get it down to three, uh, possibly sooner. This is important because if you're shopping and you're paying for your goods with a cryptocurrency, uh, especially if you're in like a supermarket or something, then you need that finality to happen quickly. You can't wait 10 minutes for the Bitcoin blockchain to finally finalize its blocks. Uh, and so what Algorand does um, is through their technical prowess, they're actually able to do a sub four second uh, finality time. And so these three features um, are how they get past, how Algorand gets past the blockchain trilemma and how it solved those three interacting things in a way that other blockchains have yet to be able to do so. And so what can you do with a highly scalable, very fast, very decentralized, very secure blockchain? And the answer is pretty much anything. Uh, one of the reasons we're actually so 
big on Algorand, so bullish on Algorand, is that we see core critical security focused um, speed needed resources uh, industries as being the prime clients of, of the Algorand blockchain. Um, and so you can think of things like healthcare. Whenever uh, an ambulance or a paramedic is on the way, they need to access the medical information of the person they're going to immediately. They need to make sure that it stays secure. And if there's more than one person accessing that information at a time, that is, there are multiple ambulances going out to different areas uh, throughout the nation, then you need to have a scalable blockchain as well. Algorand checks all those boxes. And so for hospitals um, and, and other sort of healthcare industry, players, the Algorand blockchain is going to be ideal. Uh, secondly, you're going to be looking at government. Um, obviously, security is paramount for any sort of government um, situation. Uh, Algorand is the most secure. Uh, we'll see a little bit why here later on in the um, in the presentation. Uh, once again, speed. Um, this could be for law enforcement. And so as a police officer approaches a vehicle, they need to have all the information that's attached to that plate or to that name in front of them so they can be aware and be safe for themselves and safe, uh, create safety for the environment around them. Uh, and so law enforcement is another arm of the government that could benefit greatly from a highly scalable very fast, a uh, very secure blockchain. And then the obvious um, finance, um, banks, governments, um, anyone that's dealing with money or, or transacting money, moving money across borders is going to want a blockchain that is both uh, very, very fast, uh, like Algorand. They're going to be super, super secure because they're dealing with money. And then as their business grows, obviously, they're going to want scalability because more people, uh, more transactions are going to take place on that blockchain and they need to be able to handle it. Um, these are just three of the industries that can be absolutely revolutionized uh, by blockchain and particularly by Algorand. So healthcare, government, finance, three of the most important industries that we have as a society. Um, and they are all you know, fair game for a blockchain like Algorand, uh, which is another reason why we're you know, totally bullish on the project. Um, so what goes under the hood in that? Um, the reason that these uh, industries want to join the Algorand ecosystem is, is, is numerous, but you know, two things really stand out. The first is that it's easy for their developers uh, that they already have to move over to Algorand. And what makes it so easy is the Algo Kit. Um, the Algo Kit is on version 2.0. As of the time of this recording, they will keep continuing to develop it uh, to make it even easier, more user programmer friendly. Uh, essentially, though, what Algo Kit does is it allows the most popular programming languages, um, such as Python, uh, TypeScript, to be converted directly into a language that Algorand understands in order to create smart contracts and, and other dApps. Uh, and so by making the Algo Kit available to developers and by using the world's most popular programming languages in that algo kit it makes it very very easy for programmers to adopt the algorand blockchain and in return those industries we discussed before the programmers they already have can very easily migrate uh, their information to the secure fast scalable decentralized algorand blockchain uh, the second piece of the tech stack that makes it uh, ideal for these industries is that they are quantum proof um, and they're able to do that through a uh, vrf it's a a verifiably random function. Um, that is, um, as we saw before, the validators for validating the next block are randomly chosen. Because they're randomly chosen and provably random at that, like mathematically provable, um, that is what gives them the quantum resistance that other blockchains just simply don't have. Um, the, despite how quickly and, and how effectively quantum computers can do calculations, random is still random. And so there's nothing to actually predict. Um, and that's how we're able to provide or how Algorand is able to provide uh, the quantum proof security of the future that's going to be required for you know healthcare, government, uh, finance, and other industries. Uh, and so between the Algo Kit making it accessible to any developer that knows uh, Python, which is you know, basically all of them, um, as well as the quantum proof security, um, Algorand is definitely positioned itself in a B two B marketplace in order to serve the you know the highest end clients from government to healthcare to finance. And the man that makes all this possible, um, the founder of Algorand, is a man named Silvio McCauley. Um, and Silva McCauley is actually famous within the uh, mathematics world and now the blockchain world. Um, he is a member of the MIT faculty. Uh, what he's known for, though, is for winning the Turing Award, which is the highest honor in computer science, you know, similar to a, like a Nobel Prize. 
Uh, he has won the Turing Award for cryptography. Um, in fact, his work, his mathematical work, uh, his work in cryptology have laid the foundations for all blockchains. Um, and so you actually have leading Algorand, um, one of the forefathers of blockchain and cryptology, uh, generally speaking. Uh, furthermore, he's also an experienced entrepreneur um, in this space. Um, he's had two previous startups. Uh, both of which were acquired, uh, both of which dealt with micropayments or digital certificates or, you know, some sort of, you know, actually blockchain related uh, before blockchain was a thing um, industry. Um, and so Sylvia McCauley at the head is a huge, huge boon for the Algorand project. The man has more or less invented cryptology. He's been at MIT since 1983. Uh, very, very you know, solid leader, a very, very solid team that surrounds him. And they've made very, very solid partnerships. Uh, many, many more than the three on the page, obviously, but this kind of gives you an idea of the breadth of what they're looking at. So the UN Development Fund kind of shows you why governments are definitely eager to build on Algorand. Um, and what that development fund is doing is it's actually launching a set of tools to help uh, the UN and other developing nations utilize uh, blockchain in order to solve complex challenges in the world, you know, such as poverty or tracking or uh, verification of documents, different things like this. Uh, and so the UN Development Fund, you know, is a is a partner. They are using the technology. Uh, world Chess and the FIDE Association. Uh, the reason this is in here is because of the scalability. Chess is one of the most popular games in the world, and the World Chess Federation is actually using Algorand in order to provide transparency for their ratings, for their tournament results. Uh, the recent World Championship was actually placed on Algorand uh, so people can view the games. Um, and this um, also kind of dovetails into things like um, you know Major League Soccer, MLS, as well as FIFA um, have also done you know partnerships with, with Algorand. So, so sports teams um, are, are definitely, definitely potential clients of Algorand because they need to scale and they need a lot of power to happen at once. Whenever there's a game and there are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people all over the world watching that game, and then they all want to go buy, you know, their favorite player's NFT, you need a blockchain that can actually handle that. And with the uh, quick finality time, um, as well as that scalability we discuss, um, Algorand is, you know, perfect in order to um, service those those industries where there's going to be huge spikes in, in transaction periodically. Oh, and then finally, we got Planet Watch. Uh, Planet Watch is up here uh, because of a couple things. One, it just shows the commitment to uh, being green and conservation mindedness that Algorand has by partnering with Planet Watch. Uh, but more importantly, it shows a new avenue, a new industry that Algorand is starting to encroach into. What Planet Watch does is they have IoT air quality sensors, you know, spread throughout the world. And they're using the Algorand blockchain in order to store that air quality data. Um, and so what you're seeing is that Algorand also now has a, you know, critical role it can play in the development of IoT. And because it's so fast, and because it's never gone down, and for all the wonderful reasons that we've discussed already, um, Algorand blockchain makes a, a perfect blockchain in order to run IoT devices where they always need to be on, always need to be functioning, um, and always need to be providing their data and possibly some automation uh, to go with it. Um, and so these three uh, partnerships display the areas and, and why people in those areas would definitely want to build on the Algorand blockchain. As far as the tokenomics go, it's, uh, it's actually a thing of beauty. Um, very, very you know, good tokenomics. We can see here, there are actually two things to point out. Uh, one would be Algorand Inc. and one would be the Algorand Foundation. Uh, Algorand Inc. is what's traditionally called the team. They're the ones that actually developed Algorand. Um, and you can see they're getting 22.9% of that initial token distribution. Um, which is a little bit high um, typically, but whenever you look at the team, whenever you look at the rest of what they're doing, um, it kind of comes into focus. And so the Algorand Foundation um, is not the team, strictly speaking. It's more of the uh, promotional arm. It's more of the developer relationship arm. Um, and so what the Algorand Foundation is doing is it's responsible for actually building the ecosystem. Um, and so this is actually more for the users and the ecosystem than it is for the team, uh, which is why I'm not counting that in the you know in the, in the team allocations. Um, and then you can see they've already put out you know quite a bit of of money for uh, different um, for for different things, different developments, uh, different you know programs and DApps within the ecosystem. And then there's a a very very generous nearly thirty percent uh, that's actually being allocated to um, you know, to relay notes to the public, uh, which is something that um, actually anybody can do. Uh, so as far as token distribution goes, 
um, it's it, it's pretty good. Um, there, there's a lot of you know, most of the tokens, nearly 70% of the tokens um, are actually going towards community uses, uh, which is something that you like to see. Um, as far as market cap and numbers, uh, at the time of this video, there's a market cap of about 1.5 billion. Um, there is a total supply of 10 billion. Um, those are being released slowly over the next six years now. Um, and then the highest price has been 282. Um, and that was achieved, uh, as you can see, about three years ago on 620, uh, 219. Um, and so this is where the numbers stand now. And then here are the charts to show where the numbers have been. Uh, the upper left starts with your all time chart, and then it follows to the second one, the one year chart. Uh, your bottom left is your six month, and then the final chart is going to be your three months. And what you can see is that this is actually a healthy chart with healthy price action. Uh, but more importantly, in the last three months, um, once again, as of recording this video, the market has trended upward. Um, and if you look in that last chart, you can definitely see that uh, algo is trending with the market. So there's there's nothing strange there. Um, that's exactly what you would expect to happen as the market goes up. You know, the better projects are actually going to trend up as well. Um, and then as adoption and things occur, they'll start to distinguish themselves, which is what we think is going to happen with Algorand. Um, and so when we take a quick look at you know where the price has been, where we think it will go, uh, we're currently 93% down from uh, from an all-time high, uh, which you saw was about $2.80. Uh, we are 128% up from an all-time low, which was around $0.08, cents, um, which means that we have about a 14x in order to reclaim all-time highs. And uh, once again, if we're not going, if we don't believe that the token will reclaim an all-time high, um, then you have to question you know, whether or not you invest it. So we certainly believe that an all-time high will be reclaimed. In fact, we believe that um, that all-time high will be surpassed for many of the reasons that were already discussed in this presentation. And so all in all, Algorand is a super, super exciting investment, uh, strategic investment for us. It's at the forefront of you know many things in blockchain space from security to speed to decentralization. Um, it's got one of the most decorated uh, award-winning uh, cryptology founders, you know, founding fathers um, on its team and, and Silvio McCauley. Um, and so between solving the trilemma, uh, focusing their efforts on businesses, you know, B2B that need the speed, the decentralization and the security that's offered. Um, and by being led by an award-winning founder, um, all this makes Algorand a very, very exciting strategic investment um, that we're very, very happy to be putting our investment into. Thank you.